Hello, I'm Robert Scoble, and you're watching WorkFast TV, which is about how the internet is changing work. This show is supported through the generous support of SAP. SAP provides software that helps both large and small businesses manage their business, lower costs, and bring more services to their business relationship partners. Thank you to SAP for supporting social media and WorkFast TV. Um, keep in mind, this is a recorded show. This is not a live show like our usual shows, but we'll be back live next week. My guest today is uh, Greg Brockway, uh, president and co-founder of TripIt, which is an online service that helps you when you travel. Uh, we'll talk today about both TripIt as well as other services that help you uh, travel better. So Greg, thanks for uh, coming on uh, WorkFast TV. Thanks for and having it's me. It's a topic I really care a lot about because we travel a lot, me and Rocky. In fact, we were just in Berlin using uh, TripIt to help, help uh, all sorts of things. Tell me a little bit about what TripIt is, and then we'll talk about travel. Yeah, sure. So TripIt is an automated personal travel assistant. And the, the way it works is we read your email to create a master travel itinerary. And then once we've pulled all that information together, we've built some tools to help make the travel experience easier and to share that information with your friends, your coworkers, your, your family, you know, who, whoever. So it's, a, it's an automated travel assistant. Yeah, I, I just looked at my next trip. Uh, we're going to Washington, D.C. Next, next week, and I learned I'm stuck in a bad seat. Yeah. <laughs> so you actually... Uh, uh, hook up to other um, web services out there to check on seat availability and see what what the best seats are that you could get on your plane and stuff like that. Yeah, among other things, there's so many great individual services out there online to, to trying to help make travel easier. Yeah. What TripIt's about is helping you find the right information at the right time. So we're we're like a home base for travel. We pull all your information together and then when we think it's important, we, we connect you to cool sites like, yeah, I think you're referring to Seat Advisor. Yeah. Um, we pull other content into the TripIt site itself. And it's all designed, again, just to simplify and streamline the, 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 the hassles that we all deal with w whenever we travel. Yeah. We'll come back to TripIt in a little while, but you've been in the travel business for, what, 10 years, you said? Almost 10 years, yeah. I was a co-founder of Hotwire back, uh, back in 1999. Wow. And how is travel changing? Because, you know, when I grew up and my parents used to take us on trips, we had a travel agent that helped do everything. Right now, I've never d talked with a travel agent in, in a couple of years at least. So, so. Travel has changed. Yeah. Um, that being said, you know, travel agents are still a big part of the picture. But, yeah. you know, travel um, actually just last year passed a really interesting milestone. 2007 was the first year where online travel actually uh, exceeded offline travel. Yeah. So the, the trend is, is, is real, it's happening, it's huge, um, and it's un unstoppable. Um, within that, you've got a lot of in, in interesting stuff going on. You had the online agencies, the Expedia's, Travelocities, and Orbitses of the world. Um, you had suppliers fighting back to, and now actually suppliers sell more airline tickets, hotel rooms, rental cars than the agencies do. And the success of the category has brought in this flood of new startups that yeah. are all trying to make the travel experience easier. So for, for a lot of people, it's a very confusing, scary place to, to, to try and sort, sort through. And the, there's different kinds of trips. I know when I go to Seattle, uh, I'm far less likely to deal with a travel agent because I'm familiar with Seattle, right? And you usually just need a hotel and a rental car and an airline. Yeah. But when you go somewhere like London, maybe you've never been to London before, that's a daunting place, right? You, you One, you don't know the cheapest way to get there. Two, you don't know um, like how you're going to get around, right? And Europe has great rail travel. And if, if you're going to go multi-country, you really want to think about the rail and how you're going to get around. That's where a travel agent really was useful because they knew the ground and they knew, oh, you need to be on the train by this time. So, make, you know, here's how you get there, what side of the railway you're going to be on. All that stuff, when you go to a new place, is really daunting, yeah. particularly if you land in some place like uh, Japan where you don't speak the language, right? And the signs aren't usually in English, so it's uh, you really have to have some good guidance. But give me an idea of um, what you're seeing happen in, in, in both of those areas. The small regional trip, you know, that's a two-hour trip that's mm -hmm. in, in the same country you live in yeah. probably, compared to the big vacation, you know, uh, 20 days in Europe traveling around. Sure. Well, you're absolutely right. Um, there's business travel, there's leisure travel, there's simple trips, complicated trips, there's all kinds of travel. And that's one of the reasons why w the, the one-stop shop for travel idea is it just hasn't happened. I mean, it's been over 10 years. You'd think if it was going to happen, it's going to happen. It's not. Travel's very fragmented. People use different services depending on the kind of travel that they want to take. So 
business trips, maybe use your corporate travel agency, maybe you do it yourself, but again, very simple, very uh, transactional. Um, complicated trips through Italy, you know, the, 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 the perfect 10 days in Thailand. These are, these are trips where actually a travel agency can still be, you know, the best solution to sorting through, through all that noise. Yeah. Um, what, what we're doing at TripIt is trying to bring all that information together because the challenges you face in terms of, you know, what hotel, maps, directions, weather, getting it in your calendar, you know, sharing it with your friends are the same whether you're traveling for business or for pleasure. And so the way TripIt works is we pull your information in both from the travel agency as well as from your corporate corporate um, agency. But that's, uh, you're, you're absolutely right. That's one of the reasons people struggle with the travel planning process is there's so many different kinds of trips and so many different places to get the right information. Yeah. The, the other thing that's really changed in the last 10 years is all these services that have come online both to help you buy the ticket, right? We were talking about yeah. Faircast, for instance, mm -hmm. that lets you uh, try to find a cheaper price, to flight trackers, right? We didn't have flight trackers 10 years ago where we could actually watch where uh, a flight is in the air, or if you're sitting in the airport and they keep telling you, oh, your flight's being delayed, you can actually see where the yeah, inbound yeah. flight is and see if they're telling you the truth or not. And oftentimes, uh, the online service is more accurate than what they're telling you at the gate. It, 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 it can be, uh, much to the airline's uh, chagrin. Yeah, flight trackers or uh, flight aware, flight stats, great, great sites. Um, yeah, so there, there are a lot of these, and going back to this, you know, success of the category, it's attracted so many new startups, so many interesting ideas. For the typical traveler, though, it's really bewildering. I mean, you're, yeah. you're a pretty online savvy guy. I mean, there, most travelers aren't going to figure out how to find the flight, you know, that flight stat place. They're not going to find how to check on their, their seat. They might not even, most people don't even know that you can look that stuff up online. When I show it to people in the airport, they're going, wow, that is so cool, you know, to be able to f follow the plane as it crosses the United States and see what's going on. Yeah, I mean, that, that, is, the, that, the world, that yeah. is that is the problem. You know, how do you, how do you get the right information at, at, at the right time? So there are lots of these really neat, exciting services. The challenge is how do they break through the noise to get in front of the traveler at the right, at the right time? Um, but there, uh, there are lots of these things coming up that will make, over time, the travel experience easier. And that's one of the things that I think is starting to happen on online is these services are finding ways to talk to each other. Um, and that's one of the, the big trends that I think um, we're you know, having fun exploring how to make that happen more effectively with yeah. TripIt. What are some of the services you use when you travel? Um, uh, so I tend to shop around. I'm a bit of a cheapskate when I travel. So my travel is very different from my wife's travel. I'm the budget guy. She is, you know, the other end of the end of the spectrum. Um, I, I do use. Uh, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a Travelocity fan. Actually, old old school. They were, um, as you may know, one of the first out, out of the gate um, yeah. um, for just booking, you know, air, basic air, car, hotel. Um, I think Faircast and Yapta both have really interesting uh, models for, for tracking flights or figuring out whether pricing is going up, do up you, or down. Do you find the, the, the uh, fares are the same price on Travelocity as going to United or Lufthansa or whatnot? Or uh, is there any difference from going, because we were talking before the cameras turned on that, that you're noticing a lot more people are going directly to the, the carrier itself, you know, to the United.coms or to the Lufthansa's or whatnot to buy their tickets instead of going to the yeah. Travelocity. What's the difference between those two approaches? Well, really, the, the only place um, where you can consistently find better prices is, is, is Hotwire. Yeah. And to a certain extent, uh, Priceline. But um, Hotwire, sort of day in, day out, is going to have the cheapest price. It may not always work for you because it's non-refundable. They don't tell you uh, the time uh, for airline tickets ahead of time. So it's, it's not necessarily appropriate for all trips. But if price is really what you're all about, Hotwire is definitely the, the, way, to, the way to go. Yeah. Um, in terms of the, the more traditional um, agencies, they so try to... So why do you use Travelocity then? Um, you know, if, if I have to cancel something, um, Hotwire is non-refundable. Yeah. So I mean, um, again, different sites for different kinds of different kinds of trips, but yeah. their their car and their hotel deals are, are out of sight. Um, yeah. So so everyone tries to have the same price, but there's this constant game of um, cat and mouse where people do try and find ways of undercutting e each other. One of the big things that you saw for a long time was as the suppliers, the airlines, the rental car companies, the hotels tried to bring traffic back to their own sites and not have to pay distribution costs to Travelocity's, Expedia's, Orbis's. They would give you b benefits for purchasing directly from them. So frequent flyer mile spiffs, maybe different terms. Maybe it's not refundable from the, from the hotel, but it's, you know, maybe it's refundable from the hotel, not refundable from the, you know, from the, from the agency. So 
people have been trained to, to shop around, and so th there isn't one place that I go, and, and that's, that's pretty true for most people. Unless you've got a company saying, book here, or we're not going to pay for it, people, people like to shop around. Yeah. I, what about hotels? Because I, I know that going to Google is sometimes daunting. First of all, if you do a search for like Berlin Hotel, you're going to find all these intermediaries and not even find you know, what the hotel's about, right? It's going to be, oh, here we have a great price on this hotel. Um, what's the best way you found to, to search for hotels and how does that fit into the, the new services that are evolving like yours? Yeah, so hotels is still probably the hardest thing to get the best price. Uh, the prices fluctuate the most, you know. Airlines have gotten pretty good. It's more or less the same unless you go opaque like with a hot wire. Um, hotels can, can, can vary widely, particularly when you move outside of the United States. So in the U.S., prices are fairly consistent no matter where you buy from. When, once you move out of that, you start to get into the, a, a whole different world and it really does pay um, to shop around. How, how do you solve that? You shop around. Yeah. <laughs> uh, depends where you're going. I mean, there's great sites in, in Europe for, for, uh, for hotels. Um, Veneer.com is, is a good one. Tablet Hotels um, is, is a smaller site, but also a good one. If you're going to Asia, it's a different if it's, it's, it's a different list, which is back to this original point, which is for most people, like, how do you how do you figure it all out? Yeah. So for a I didn't even know about those two sites. And I've been to Europe four times this year. Yeah. Well, um, so when you're um, of course I usually have somebody helping you know on the other side that knows the hotel market, which is a another way the social network comes into place, right? Yeah. And that's, uh, wow, um, you know, a whole lot of people are trying to come up with um, uh, services which will look at where your friends stayed, where your friends of friends stayed, and, and bubble those back up as, as another way to sort through, sort through the noise. So lots of options out there. Um, and again, the, what I think the, the new trend that you're seeing is lots of services trying to help travelers cut through the noise to simplify and streamline the experience. Yeah. When you're traveling, what kinds of services do you have on your iPhone? Do you have a flight tracker? I do, yeah. So I uh, well, I, I, uh, I start with the Tripit. Um, M.Tripit.com is, is 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 one of them. Um, I, I, uh, Tripit also links to Flight Stats, which is a great um, mo mobile service. Yeah. Um, I have a couple booking services on my iPhone. So American's got an iPhone app. Um, Travelocity's got an iPhone app. But I, I like to book from the computer. I think the, the the paradigm in travel is people like to book online, and then they move to you know the the, the mobile devices more read you know contextual information. Um, I need I need the uh, purchase confirmation number. I need the address. That kind yeah. of thing. That that brings me to something. I, I still mistrust my digital devices because one, the battery could die. Two, the device could die. Uh, three, it's embarrassing to have to pull it out at the counter. You know? Yeah. So you you still see a lot of people traveling with a folder of all their tickets. Oh, this and all is their, it. This this is the Bible for most people that travel today. Is is they. they they buy from all these different places, and it's not just air, car, hotel. It's restaurant reservations, it's tours, it's um, ground transfers, it's uh, you know maps, and they stick it in one of these, you know, the old Manila travel folder. And yeah. and it just, I mean, when we were starting Trip, it just felt like, shouldn't there be a better way? I mean, it's it's there's so much technology out there. This this there is there is a better metaphor for this. I mean, the Rolodex doesn't exist anymore, yeah. right? I mean. A lot of things don't exist anymore. Have you seen some of the new paper guides that are coming out? Like Dave Sifri, uh, uh, the founder of Technorati, came out with a company called the Off Offbeat Guides, if I remember right, where you stick a lot of the stuff that you collect on TripIt, and it builds you a book so that you actually have a book with your with a Google map of your of your hotel, yeah, <laughs> and with the confirmation numbers in it, and with the weather and all the stuff that you need printed out, so you don't have to worry about your electronic device. It's good backup, I guess, I along like with a whole bunch of tourist information, like the mu museums that are nearby you and stuff like that. Yeah, I like what Dave's doing a lot. Um, again, it goes back to this idea of there's so much information out there it's overwhelming for most people yeah. um, Dave's idea is just give me a little give Dave a little bit of information about your trip and he'll sort through all of this stuff to bring you a personal relevant um, context contextual travel guide so yeah. I think that's a I think that's an exciting idea um, and I think he's off to a good start yeah so uh, let's talk a little bit about trip it so the, the neat thing I like about trip is I'm at united.com or tra yeah. travel or whatever I buy my ticket and I email uh, trip it my uh, confirmation letter right? yeah. with all uh, you know that I get because I email from United I email my tickets to my email box right yeah. and then I forward it to this plans at tripit.com 
right? Yeah. You, want to do, you want to do a quick demo? Sure. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So, Because um, a lot of people probably haven't seen it. It's really cool. Uh, so I'm, I'm in the middle of planning this trip. Um, here's the trip. I'm going out to some conferences back east, and uh, I've got I got one piece of my flight, and I've got the, uh, the conferences in there. And just last night and this morning, I was booking um, my um, open table reservation. So I just take this, and I forward it to um, plans at TripIt. Dot com. Yep. And uh, we do the hotel that I. And booked. you don't have to edit it. What's no, that? You, you just you just take and, the. And you don't have to edit it or anything like that. You just forward it, right? Just just forward it right over, and then. Now you can even forward because a lot of times when I'm doing speaking, they they uh, send me an email with a PDF document in it. Yep. You can even forward the PDF document and it'll go in. Right? PDF, HTML, um, you know, te plain text, um, you know. Most uh, sometimes it's just a link to another website where we have to um, pull the information back. So it doesn't really matter. It, emails is the starting point yeah. um, for pulling all this information together for you. So and your engine then parses that email and figures out what my flight numbers are and all sorts of stuff. Yeah, I mean that's the fun it's part. Crazy of what, technology. Uh, I've <laughs> yeah, we, we call it. Um, we have some very smart people back in the office working on this. We call it the itinerator. It's it's the it's it's the technology that we built to basically read and understand your 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 travel information and then you know. Uh, turn that into latitude, longitude, time, and tie it back to you as a user. So really powerful, interesting stuff. And again, it, it works with all of this unstructured in information to create a nice, clean um, travel itinerary. Very cool. So once you send that email, a couple minutes later, you come over to tripit.com. Yeah, well, not even a couple see? minutes. I mean, it's been a couple seconds. Let me just refresh the page, and we'll see that the, um, I mean, I could do other things, too. We'll, we'll see that the, um, the open table restaurant reservation is now in my travel itinerary. And you know we could do my hotel that I booked last night, but I think you get the picture. Yeah. Um, and then the neat thing is because I understand now the open table knows where you're going to be, right? So you don't have to fill in I'm in Los Angeles or I'm in Berlin or whatnot. Right. There's uh, in that open table reservation. There's an address for the restaurant, and there's a date, and there's the name of the restaurant, and there's other information like the the um, phone number for the restaurant. So we just read all that stuff and we stick it into your itinerary automatically. So no more you know cutting and pasting. That's one of the big things. You just tell us and we take care of the rest of it. Very cool. And then once it's in here, we can do other things with it. Like we can automatically add it to your calendar, which is making people really happy. So there's no more, again, cutting and pasting of this information. You just email it to us and it'll show up in your Google Calendar, your Outlook Calendar, you know, what have you. That's really it'll Show cool. up in your mobile device. So it looks nice on an iPhone. Yep. <laughs> Um, and we also bring in other interesting information, maps. Um, um, we know I've got a conference in Atlanta, so we automatically drop in maps and weather. And it's just a lot of the boring, simple things that people have to go to all these different sites to find. We just do it all for you. That's why we call it this um, automated travel assistant. Now, it, I, I just put in, a, uh, just a few minutes ago, I put it in my Washington, D.C. trip. Now, does it help me find uh, hotels near the near the airport or whatnot? Or um, not? Not yet. Right now, okay. we're more like um, the Manila Travel folder, where it's it. you. You do you find whatever information you you think is relevant, and you send it to us, and we keep track of it. There is a, a, a future version of TripIt, which makes sense. We're learning more and more about you as a traveler, so it makes sense that we'll be able to start to recommend things for you in, in the future okay. um, based on where you've been in the past, maybe where your friends have been in the past, where the TripIt community has, has been. So if so. I go to a hotel site like Hilton or something and buy a hotel and then forward that email as well, it shows up on my travel plan for that week? Yeah, absolutely. So yeah. you know, all, all the major hotel sites, airlines, rental cars, open tables, you know, Ticketmasters, a lot of the ground transportation things like Super Shuttle and Carry Limousine, you know, you just send it to us and we keep we keep track of it. Very cool. We keep track and of it. Um, so what what else? Uh, it also shows things like weather, and it, it that's what's cool about it is because once you find out, once you put a trip in there, it, it goes out to all these databases and pulls interesting information in there. Yeah. So you know, maps, weather. I mean, uh, again, I like the things that are are happening behind the scenes. So we just put that um, restaurant into the. Um, um, into TripIt, and it should have it should be showing up um, in my in my Google Calendar. I got to go to the month view um, automatically down here for my um, there's a Web 2.0 conference um, for my for my upcoming trip to Atlanta. So wow. again, it just seamlessly. Yeah. What what other things are you seeing happen in travel 
from your point of view because you're really the center point now of, of trying to integrate all these services together. At, um, what's happening in terms of both the programming and the business model? Yeah, well, I, we are one of the one of the services out there that's trying to, to pull all this information together. We're uh, we're not quite the center point today, but I, I appreciate the <laughs> appreciate the plug. Well, for um, many of us who have adopted tri trip, it, it, it is our center point. It's where everything comes into and is the one place we look for, and even we'll print out some pages from it. Right? Yeah, well, it's it's a starting point, it yeah. is, and it's a home base. Um, but you know, we we pull information. Um, both through mashups, so in a structured way from other websites into the TripIt experience, but we also send you off to other sites that we think are important and interesting and, and helpful that have a lot of value for you. So um, Sikuru, um, tra Travel Stats, I mean, some of these other great sites that we talk talked about uh, earlier. And I think that the trend that's going on here, that a lot of the interesting new, new companies are starting to to, to, to make happen is, is this idea that everything's becoming interoperable. Yeah. Um, more and more intelligent services are popping up that can talk to each other and, and bring the relevant information to bear to solve whatever specific problem is, you know, is facing you. So TripIt's all about travel, so we talk to and work with behind the scenes and, and on, on the front end um, lots of different travel sites. Yeah. Um, other companies are doing similar things in, in, other, in other verticals, but I, I think that's, a, that's an amazing thing that's happening right now. These um, agents, I mean, they're not all intelligent, but they're increasingly looking intelligent to yeah. bring back relevant information at the right point when you, when you need it. Yeah. Do you tell uh, information about the airports that you're visiting? For instance, I always like to know uh, where the free Wi-Fi is, if there is free Wi-Fi. Yeah. And if there's not, which where are the areas in the hotel, in the uh, airport to get on, and and can I use a existing service that I've already signed up with? Because I'm a T-Mobile user, for instance. Uh, you know, can I find a T-Mobile hotspot somewhere in the airport? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you know what I what excites me about this idea so much is that every time I sit down with someone and talk about it, they come up with another great idea to to make the service even better. So we don't we don't do yeah. Wi-Fi right now, but it's a perfect example of. Um, the kind of content that's out there, you know it's out there, you yeah. know it exists, that we can start to pull back because we know that you're going to be in you know, Heathrow Airport, we know what terminal you're going to be in, we know what time you're going to be there, you know, we can even look which you know, Wi-Fi hotspots cost money, which, which, which don't, and, and just that's it's a great example of the kind of content that's really relevant. So we don't have it on TripIt today, but it's, it's the kind of thing that people are asking us for. Do you show the kind of power adapter that I need for the countries I'm visiting? Yeah, you're such a frequent traveler, I'm sure you know that one. But <laughs> I know uh, it, but uh, <laughs> I, I remember the first time I went to Europe and uh, there was three different power adapters yeah. you needed to carry, and I didn't have one of the right ones, right? So yeah, uh, but it's nice to know, even for a frequent traveler, you always Am I, is it the three-prong one that's in Germany, or is it the two-prong one that's in Europe, in yeah. England? You know. so, so we're playing around with, a, with, a, with, a, with this concept of a travel guide, um, where we're starting to pull back information. So my trip, I'm going to Atlanta and I'm going to New York. Right now we're pulling information back from um, uh, Flickr for pictures, we're pulling from Wikipedia for destination information, Eventful for events, and, and we're starting to add in more of those Now services. Wikipedia is interesting because it's very unstructured data. Um, and a lot of the airports, people are putting in whether the airport has free Wi-Fi. For instance, the Las Vegas airport, if you look it up on Wikipedia, there's a line there that says, this is a free Wi-Fi airport, and that's good to know. Yeah, yeah, so I mean, um, we can pull up the, what's in there for um, Atlanta, one of, one of my stops, um, and it, it may actually already be there, so we may actually have, have solved your problem. Um, Wiki, uh, Wikipedia is another great example, relatively unstructured data, but they're starting to add context to it so that other services can, is, can, can read from it. So they're starting to geotag their content, which, which makes it easier for us to, to pull it in and understand it and surface it up, surface it up to you. Right. Um, some of the things that are probably more futuristic, but when you arrive at Seattle Airport, uh, you have a multitude of choices of how to get into, let's say, downtown Seattle, right? You can take a limo, which will be about 100 bucks. You can take a taxi, which will be about 50. Or you can hop on a city bus, which will cost you a dollar and a half. To, right. A dollar and a half. And, and I only figured this out after living there for three years, you know. But it's, it's just as fast to go downtown on the bus as it is to take the t taxi or the limo. It's just you didn't know that it existed, right? Yeah, exactly. It's just out the door to the right. Do you, do you see services like that to tell you, hey, don't, don't take certainly like in uh, London don't take don't take the taxi you're going to pay $200 to take a taxi he head over to this terminal take the underground and you know you'll save you know $149 or whatnot yep yep 
So there's, there's there are services out there like uh, Google launched uh, uh, their sort of public transit service that are taking a very structured approach to trying to surface that information, giving you lots of options. You can do it's, it looks a lot like their Google Maps product on on steroids for public transportation. There are other people who feel like the only way to get that kind of information is to go out and actually ask fellow travelers. Yeah. So there's, you're increasingly starting to see that kind of information in, in review sites. So um, I mean, the, the king of all review sites is TripAdvisor. Yeah. Um, they, folk, they started on hotels, but they've expanded their service to encompass a lot of other kinds of restaurants and, you know, uh, I don't know if they have airport information specifically, but transportation information, a lot. I mean, it's it's a very rich community of content. So um, it'll be interesting to see which of those ultimately proves most beneficial for the, the traveler, but it's yeah. great to see that both are coming along very, very, very quickly. Yeah, and the problem is some cities have really great services to hook into. Like Seattle, you, you can even look at where the bus is located. Yeah. The, each bus in Seattle has a GPS on it, and you can see on the map where the bus is actually at right now. So when you get outside of the hotel or outside of the airport, you can decide, do you want to wait the 15 minutes for the bus or take the taxi? Because you can see where the bus is actually at right now. And the way I think it should, and that's true of a lot of different individual cities. And that's not true of cities. a lot of cities around the world. You know, a lot of cities don't have GPS like that. But even cities that do, they don't talk to each other. Yeah. So, I mean, how do you know if you're going to a city that has that or doesn't have that? And the idea behind, um, you know, TripIt and, and um, the, the companies that are trying to build the intelligent agent concept is we're going to not build the you know, public transportation, see the bus route, but we're going to let you know it exists. And where it's, where it's possible, we'll take the information we have about you, hand it off to that service if you want, I mean, if you ask us to, and then pull back um, or, or, you know, save you the, the hassle of re-entering the information again and again and again. Yeah. And that's where I think, you know, intermediaries or uh, home-based ideas like TripIt can start to, to make the process easier. Yeah. Not by trying to do everything, but by bringing the right information. Are you building uh, uh, services for the GPS in the new phone? So when you're traveling and you're on trip, it, you can say, find me a restaurant and it'll know where you are and find you a restaurant locally? Or uh, yeah, so or is that still futuristic? Um, so, so we do have a nice mobile interface. Um, it doesn't currently use on, it's not a client resident um, application. It's an m.tripit.com. Looks great on the iPhone. Um, so uh, the nice thing, though, is there are a lot of services like that that already exist. So we may choose not to, to build that. What we'd like to do is take your um, travel information and give it to one of those services that already has that. And so you get the answer, whether it's the answer from TripIt or for some, from some, somebody else. Yeah. But the, 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 the whole geolocation, GPS, where, where are you in the world, and connect you to relevant information is a, is a, is a huge opportunity that people are now just, just beginning to scratch the surface on where all that could go. Yeah. And last minute, uh, what else do we need to know about TripIt and what you guys are doing? Uh, you know, we're, we're, we're beta. We've, um, we're still building out the service. So, you know, every couple of weeks we put out new features and functionality. Right now we have a lot of our focus around um, mobile. Um, improving the mobile experience and and also we, we haven't talked about sharing the information a big part of TripIt is giving you the ability to publish that information um, to your social network um, to your friends to your family either by building a social network within TripIt or plugging it into the place where you already have built your social network so you just see probably email <laughs> could, could, well, what could email, email your mom and say hey I'm gonna be here you know? yeah well yeah, yeah that's that's one example could be Facebook could be you know um, a whole lot of other places too very cool. Um, um, any last thoughts on, on tips for travelers or things that travelers need to know? I mean, I, certainly it's interesting as, as I, I remember, you know, 10 years ago, it was hard to find anything that was on the internet. Now you, you find, you know, like the bus schedule in Seattle that actually the bus is on the internet, right? Which is very, very interesting because now you can really uh, plan a trip much better uh, down to the minute almost. Um, what ki what kinds of tips do you have for uh, you know traveling, going overseas, or uh, you know new new services coming up all the time? Um, it, it pays to shop around, and um, um, you know I, I think just you know try <laughs> try to try trip it. I think it'll start start to make your travel experience easier. Very cool. Well, thanks yeah. for coming on my show. It's uh, been a lot of fun and a lot of useful information. I'm going to go back and uh, look at all those URLs that you talked about. So. Great. Thanks, Robert. So next week's guest is Google's Summit Agarwal, uh, mobile pro product manager lead in North America. He's going to talk to us about mobile and all sorts of stuff that's happening on all these fun iPhones and Nokia phones. So um, that'll be an interesting show. 
And coming soon, we're going to have more of these kinds of things, and we'd like your feedback. Uh, this week, again, we're not uh, live, so we're not going to be on kite.tv, but usually we'll be on kite. Give us feedback on uh, twitter.com slash scobalize or whatnot. So thanks for watching. Now get back to work.